Today on Bet Online's The Fight Guys. A dominant Tyson Fury delivers in Wembley. What's next for the Gypsy King? He can box, he can brawl, he can do it all. Unbeaten Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez battle in Vegas. It almost seems like he's the challenger coming up to fight Shakur, but no, I mean, Oscar Valdez is 30 and 0. And Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor headline at the Garden. Katie Taylor has really good boxing, but she has a little flaw in the defense that I think that can get her caught in this fight. It's all coming up on Bet Online's The Fight Guys. What's up, guys? It's Miss Zach. Welcome to the Fight Guys. I'm here with my co-host Sugar Rashad Evans. What's How up, you man? doing? How you doing, Sugar? Zach? Man, Tyson Fury vs. Dillian White, the battle for the baddest man on the planet, went down Saturday. We talked about. It. You talked a lot about how they were sparring partners. I predicted a decision win. You predicted a late round KO. In the end, six round KO. Kind of no one's right, I guess. What was your thoughts on that fight? I mean, I thought it was good how Dillian started off the fight. You know, given. Tyson feared a little bit of confusion with the southpaw stance and kind of giving Tyson that chance to make the adjustments in the fight. And he gave Dylan a chance in the fight early out, but as the fight went on, you just seen that Tyson Fury was just way too much. The angles, um, you know, keeping him along, even the inside work was just was just too much. You know, Tyson looked looked absolutely amazing. And the way that he just, you know, took his time to find the right shot, that jab uppercut was just so dirty, so nasty and just perfect timing, you know, but it really showed why Tyson Fury is regarded the way that he is. You know, he, he fights good from the outside. He fights excellent from the inside. He has great footwork from the outside. He can box, he can brawl, he can do it all. And uh, it, it's just, you know, sad to see, I guess, uh, from a fan's point of view that he may be stepping away from the sport. Yeah, I mean, he looked about 10 levels above Dillian White, who's a top 10 heavyweight, you know? Yeah. So, and we talked about how they were sparring for stuff like that. To me, it looked like Tyson Fury was having a sparring match. I mean, he had no regard, right? No, nah, He no was controlling regard. him. I mean, I don't think he was ever in 1% of danger. I mean. No, nah, I mean, I thought for, for a minute that um, Dillian was going to start going to work on a body. You know, I've seen that he landed a few right hands that looked like, you know, if he kept going there, it could do something. But, you know, the way that Tyson was just... You know, uh, like you said, to sparring, you know, very just leisurely out there, just very comfortable out there, you know, and it could be the fact that they have this experience with each other, but it could be just the fact that, you know, Tyson Fury just reached that level in his game, that mastery level, that level where you're just like, I'm not worried about everything because I see everything that you're doing even before you even know you're going to do it. Yeah, to me, he's reached a whole new level under Sugar Hill. And it's, I would agree, yeah, it is sad if he has that boy, because we've only seen it for a few fights, right? The, the two Wilder fights, now this one, three finishes. I mean, this was a guy before who was decisioning everyone. Now he's stopping people like he's prime Mike Tyson, so it is a little bit sad. It is sad. I mean, you know, he's, he's, and he's a character, too. You know, he's just not somebody you see he's a, who's a good boxer, but he's a good human being. You know, the things that he says off camera, he's a good example to follow behind if you want to be champion, because he knows how to lock it down, and he knows how to focus on what he needs to focus on. Now that uppercut, probably KO of the year so far, was a beautiful shot. Dillian White, man, he keeps getting caught with these uppercuts. First Pavetkin, sorry, first Joshua, then <laughs> yep. Pavetkin, now this. What What is it about him that makes him so susceptible to uppercuts? I don't even know. I think it's the way that he kind of dips in sometimes. Being a shorter fighter, you got to kind of wade your way inside, kind of go inside. But, you know, if you bob and weave and you miss your timing, when the uppercut's coming, you're gonna get caught with it. And uh, you know, being the shorter fighter, when you gotta fight somebody as tall as Tyson Fury, you gotta cross that bridge. And on that bridge, there's plenty of uppercuts, and it's along with other punches, but that uppercut is what Dylan White gets caught with. Yeah, Dylan White, great fight. I'm sure we'll see him back in the title fight, but it's just, I feel a bit bad, man. Those uppercuts keep catching him, left ones <laughs> and right ones. Hey, <laughs> defense, baby, defense. He gotta get on a, a second bob or something like Mike Tyson, you know, get off yeah. to an angle or whatever, but. Yeah, I mean, at least with Tyson, he ain't going to get any, uh, any, anywhere close. Yeah, and if it was Tyson Fury's last real professional fight, you know, I think it was a great send-off in Wembley Stadium in his hometown, 90-plus thousand people. <laughs> I think his stardom in England has really doubled up since the, since the Wilder fights. Yeah, he's gave, you know, the, the fans in England something to really hold on to, and that's a really good fan base out there. Those guys are crazy. I've been out there to the O2 Arena a few times. And uh, it's just a different level of, of cheering and just, you know, fandom out there. And, you know, they go out there to support the guys. And, you know, Tyson Fury is somebody fun to get behind. You know, he, he, he involves the crowd. When he walks out, he's singing and he always comes out with some kind of fun music that, you know, even if you're just like a, a lay person with music, you know the tune and you start singing with them, you know? Yeah. Fantastic fight. 
Great showing from Tyson Fury. Up next, we're going to talk about a potential fight between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Stay tuned. Stick around for more with the Fight Guys. Having these two worlds collide like this would be the first time something like this happens, and um, it, it will be huge. This is Bet Online's The Fight Guys. What's up, guys? It's Mystic Zach. Welcome back to the fight, guys. We just talked about Tyson Fury with Stillian White, but a certain guy hopped into the ring after the fight. The current UFC heavyweight champ, Francis Ngannou, gets into the ring. He says, whoever wins between us is going to be the baddest mofo on the planet. What was your thoughts on that whole thing and just the overall spectacle of it? I got hyped up. I'm going to be honest. I was really hyped up. I mean, just the prospect of that even happening uh, to me just, you know, sent sent me just, you know, very, it got me very excited. Just because, I mean, look at it. You have, you have Francis Ngannou, who without a doubt is one of the biggest stars in the UFC. And the fact that he's got knockout power in both hands, and, you know, he's got good hand speed, he's got some good boxing, uh, boxing experience in, in his pedigree. This fight, I believe, has potential to be one of the biggest fights, you know, in, in a long time in a long time, and I'll say even surpassing the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight. Wow. I, I really believe that just because of the fact that, you know, heavyweights, they, they capture people's imagination. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see two big guys fighting or just even see them, just like, wow, it's just, you're just in awe by it, you know? So everybody knows that heavyweight is the baddest man on the planet, no matter, how, you know, how many, you know, little guy champions that are just like super bad. You always look at the heavyweight like, you know, that's the baddest guy on the planet. So uh, having these two worlds collide, like this would be the first time something like this happens, and um, it, it will be huge. There's two things that I'm looking at. One, the rule set of the match, what it ends up being, right? How big the gloves are, if there's a little bit of extra holding going to be allowed, stuff like that, or is it going to be a traditional boxing rule set, which will obviously really favor Tyson Fury. Number two, how much is Ngannou going to make? Yeah. Because he's been massively underpaid, in my opinion. I mean, a guy like Dillian White made over $7 million. Ngannou, Way bigger name than Dillian White. I mean, right. much bigger than him on all socials. He's making 10% of the money. So could this be a really good sign for any UFC fighters when their contract is up that they can go over to boxing and make 10 times as much? Uh, well, I think that he's going to make a, a grip of money. You know, and I think that, you know, the money that he can make in this would, would surpass what he'll make in the UFC uh, by, by 10, you know, if not, if not more, uh, considering how f big this fight can can truly be but you know I think that um, with this fight as well too you know you know you have you know the, the contract situation with the UFC how is that going with Francis you know I mean he's still the current champion and you know I know they're in talks with what's going to happen and if he's going to be allowed to be out of to get out of his contract at times to do fights like these boxing matches and things like that because he wanted to have uh, that ability to do so and with the UFC they make it so that you you have you know you have to stay in their contract and not go out elsewhere to fight so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out but I mean as far as the gloves the most exciting part for me about the whole fight proposition was the fact that they were saying that they're going to wear these four ounce gloves these MMA gloves and um, now that to me gets me even more excited because it kind of nullifies the advantage that Tyson Fury may have with just his Boston experience, you know, because, you know, you have the, the four ounce gloves that Francis is used to wearing and he's very familiar with. But more importantly, you know, he's got such a powerful punch and that's the greatest equalizer of anything. It, it equalizes any kind of skill or technique that you may have. So if Francis is able to wear those gloves, this could be a different fight altogether. You were a former UFC champion. How is the contract structured for a champion, even if their contract does expire? Um, it, it's, it's, it's different, you know, uh, but it, it's like, a, um, you know, some, some of the, they have like a sunset clause, meaning the fact that like if you're in it, you know, you, you're a champion, then you got to stay in it, the, the contract, and you know, the, the UFC has a chance to, uh, you know, keep you, keep you locked in it. But, um, you know, it seemed as if like they were making some way with, 
with with Francis, you know, having some productive talks and really, you know, breaking down, I guess, the beef that was going on with Francis manager and the UFC and finding a middle ground in a way that they're able to communicate and make some forward progress on the conversation of where he's going to be in his contract. But there's still a lot of things need to be ironed out. And Francis is very firm on where he stands as far as wanting to be able to go out of the UFC and have these boxing matches. I mean, if he's able to do this match, imagine if, you know, it's a huge success. Who does he have next? He can have Anthony Joshua. He can have uh, Deontay Wilder. There's a bunch of different fights that he can even have in boxing that he can make a grip of money. So it, it's tough to, you know, to, to want to, um, to, to want to be able to go out there and fight in these boxing matches, but being held down in a contract where you're, you know, that you're not able to do so. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys who are trying to fight Jake Paul, right? I mean, you got Moss, right. Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor, uh, Dustin Poirier. None of them are allowed to get out of their contract and fight him. So this boxing versus MMA thing is really interesting. It really is. I mean, it, it's really, um, you know, it, it's been a battle of these, these two sports for like the last decade or so. You know, things are getting kind of heated between the boxing and the MMA as far as viewership is concerned. But, you know, with the, the blending of the two sports, being able to have, you know, both of the champions or uh, big names fight each other, uh, it, it will definitely bring fans, you know, um, together and, and really uh, propel both of the, the sports, to be honest. Have you ever considered doing a boxing match? Yeah, I, I have. I have considered it. You know, boxing is one of those things that I started off as a boxer. And um, if I can do one boxing match, I'll do it because boxing is, is my favorite thing. You know, when, when I'm in MMA, sometimes I'm like, man, let's not do takedown, let's do striking. But me as a wrestler, you know, I kind of feel pulled to do it sometimes. Speaking of boxing, we got some big fights coming up this Saturday. Up first, Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez. What are our thoughts on that matchup coming up next? Coming up, the Fight Guys preview Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez. Shakur in his last fight looks fantastic in Shamel here. I mean, he really looked like the closest thing that we've seen to like a pretty boy Floyd. And that was really a level site performance. It's next on Bet Online's The Fight Guys. What's up guys, it's Mr. Zach. Welcome back to the Fight Guys. This Saturday we've got two big events. The first one main evented by Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez. Sorry, champion comes first. Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson. Big fight, whoever wins this is the king of the 130 pound division. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Because Shakur Stevenson is a massive favorite over at BetOnline.ag. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, he really should be. I mean, when you look at Shakur Stevenson, you look at one of the cleanest boxers in the game. I mean, this guy has great defense on, great defense, uh, great movement on the outside. Um, just a really good, clean, slick boxer. Uh, really fast hands. It's just, just a phenomenal young talent, you know. And he's got that that belief, you know, that belief that just, you know, he just knows that he can't be beat. And the guy who knows that he can't be beat, the guy who's really, you know, has feel like he can't be tested, you know, he, he's going to go out there and he's going to do his thing. Yeah, Shakur in his last fight looked fantastic against Shamel here. I mean, he really looked like the closest thing that we've seen to like a pretty boy Floyd. I mean, that was really a level site performance. Yeah, a lot, a lot of shades of pretty boy Floyd. And he even kind of compares himself to pretty boy Floyd too. You know, I think that, you know, he, he's got that style, you know, defensively speaking and even just offensively speaking how he's slick though. But I feel he's a little bit more aggressive. But I mean, you know, he, his understanding for the boxing game it is very evident. You know, the way he controlled the range, the pace, the timing, the vision that he has with the setups and everything, he's really ahead of the game when it comes to just understanding uh, boxing. You know, at a young 23 years old, uh, you know, sky's the limit for somebody like him. Yeah, I mean, Oscar Valdez is getting doubted heavily coming into this fight for an undefeated world champion, right? It almost seems like he's the challenger coming up to fight Shakur, but no, I mean, Oscar Valdez is 30 and 0. He did have knockout of the year over Burchell in the fight that he wasn't expected to win. He does train with Eddie Reynoso, renowned as the world's best trainer. So he's definitely got a lot of positives on his side coming to this fight for being such a big underdog. No, he does have a lot of positives. I mean, he's he's tough. You know, he's uh, one of those guys who you know he's a great boxer as well too. But you know, he has a a, a bit of a hard nose type of fighting style. But you know, he's got a lot of power. Um, you know, he's got great vision when it comes to seeing what punches to land. And uh, you know, he, he's a dog in there. He 
he's, he's going to fight. He's going to dig down deep and he's going to face himself. He's not afraid to, you know, bring out that other guy when it comes time to and get dirty and make it happen. You know, um, his last fight, he was not looking the most impressive. And, not, you know, listening to him speak in his interviews and stuff like that, you know, going into that fight, he was feeling a bit uh, just down on himself, just based off everything that happened with the whole, you know, um, failing the drug test and everything that everyone said about him based off that, you know, it really messed him up in a different kind of way to the point where it made him just not go out there and, and, and fight the way that he can. Yeah, Valdez fails a drug test after looking super jacked, so <laughs> a bit suspicious for sure. But I mean, he, it, was, it, was, it was a diuretic, though. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, he he, he says, yeah. you know, it wasn't anything, and, and uh, you know, it was he never cheat like that. But I mean, it, it, it's it's tough though because I mean, somewhere in the middle, of the truth lies, right? And uh, you know, who who knows what that is? But it, it's evident in his last fight, you know, that that it it definitely had some effect on him. So it's going to be interesting to see how he uses that, and plus, you know, the the, the rumblings of, you know, oh, that last fight, you know, you, I don't think you really won. So he's going to want to go out there and, and, and put on a different kind of fight this time and really make a statement. Yeah, I think a really interesting part of this fight is that his trainer manager, Eddie Reynoso, has been calling out Shakur Stevenson for a long time. There's something he sees in his game that he thinks that he can teach Oscar Valdez to exploit. What that is, I don't know, because Shakur looks pretty good to me, but I think that's really interesting. It is really interesting, and it's funny because, you know, sometimes, you know, your trainer will see something in somebody, just a little thing, and, and it will be interesting to see what that thing is. You know, I think it may be the experience uh, and just feel like maybe that Shakur hasn't had someone like Valdez put that kind of pressure on him with that kind of experience and with that kind of know-how to, to, to get it done when he feels like he can get it done. So um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the game plan that Oscar comes in there with to fight somebody like Shakur. Yeah, Valdez is a guy whose work ethic has been praised by a guy like Canelo, who obviously works very hard. So we know Valdez is going to be in extremely good shape. You know he's going to come to win. And he's a massive underdog over at BetOnline.ag. Shakur Stevenson yet to be tested, really. I think it might be worth a little dart throw on Valdez here. Both of these guys are, are, are great fighters and great champion. And, and when you put, you know, someone like Valdez in the corner, I think that he's somebody who, who comes out swinging. So... Shakur is going to have to, you know, be on his P's and Q's and not really take anything for granted this fight, not even, you know, uh, take um, uh, Valdez's last performance and think that because he had that last performance, it didn't look so good that, you know, it's going to be a, a landslide victory. You know, he has to be very well measured in there and make sure that, you know, he takes out a very dangerous Oscar Valdez who, who's really come there to, to make a point. It's Shakur Stevenson, a guy who's always been linked to all the guys right above him at 135, so it could be very interesting if he does win this fight. Another big fight coming up this Saturday, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. Our thoughts on that coming up next. Up next on The Fight Guys, Serrano versus Taylor headline at Madison Square Garden. Katie with the fast hands, Serrano with the pressure, so it's going to be just a matter of, you know, who lands that big shot. This is Bet Online's The Fight Guys. What's up, guys? It's Mystic Zach. Welcome back to the fight, guys. This Saturday, we have the biggest women's boxing match of all time. Whoever wins this is going to be the GWOAT. We've got Amanda Serrano taking on Katie Taylor. Massive, massive matchup. Of course, Jake Paul's propped it up to a whole new level. What are your thoughts on this matchup? You have Katie Taylor, who, who's just uh, a tremendous talent. You know, um, you know, watching her fight is really a thing of beauty. You know, the way that she uses that heavy fake game to set up that you know, the double jab, straight right hand, and she's absolutely surgical with the way that right hand comes in so fast and so clean the way that she lands those punches and moves out of there. So, I mean, it's going to be really uh, interesting to see because she brings a lot of pressure too, but just great fight IQ too. So uh, it's going to be a very impressive fight. I mean, she's got to get uh, Amanda. Am Amanda Serrano is, is absolutely, I mean, she's one of my favorite women fighters of all time. Uh, the way that she comes forward, that double left hand that she throws is just, you know, got a lot of stink, a lot of power on it. She's a dog in there. You know, she's a, she's a fighter. She can go in there and make sure that she pushes the pace and uh, she can fight from the outside very well. Uh, she can fight it inside very well, bang it, uh, bang, bang really well, and also, you know, get off on angles too. You know, her slickness, very slick in there too. So it's going to be a, a very fun fight. Yeah, this is a historical event. It's going to be at the main room at Madison Square Garden, not the Hulu Theater. A lot of people have been asking me that. 
And then also in the coat feature, we've got a unified women's title bout. So really, I think a new step up for women's boxing, right? Really putting it in a new light. Jake Paul's obviously kind of taking Amanda under his wing, got this fight together with Eddie Hearn. This is a massive, massive fight. I really like Amanda Serrano here. I think she's only minus 130 over at betonline.ag. I really like her game compared to Katie Taylor. I saw a little bit of weakness in Katie Taylor when she fought Pursun. Those were some really close fights that Pursun probably could have won. Definitely should have won the first one, I thought. Second one was very close. Katie Taylor, very fast hands, but slowing down a little bit. Pretty susceptible to pressure, and obviously Serrano might have the most power in the history of women's boxing. Yeah, and, and it's the battle of Southpaw versus Orthodox stance. And, and with that said, you know, Kayler, Katie, Katie, Katie Taylor has uh, really good uh, boxing, but she has a little flaw in the defense that I think that can get her caught in this fight. Sometimes when when the pressure comes in for like the, the box pressure, she dips her head off defensively to that side, which is the the exact uh, Southpaw side with, with Serrano you know, favor. So uh, she can be putting her head right in the middle of traffic if she dips down like that. And I'm sure that Serrano has been keying up on that from a defensive point of view. Uh, so she's, she's going to be ready for that. So um, I like Serrano on this one, too. I think that, you know, that that southpaw style, her angles, her slickness is going to be the thing that, you know, pulls her through this fight. Yeah, it seems to me like Kate Taylor's a little bit over the hill. Not quite the fair she used to be. Obviously, great amateur career, fantastic pro career, one of the very best to do it. But yeah. I'm predicting her first ever loss. I, I agree, man. I think that um, Serrano is going to just be, uh, you know, so aggressive, so physical. She's going to fight hard. You know what I mean? She's, she, you know, got, got the hype behind her. And she's been fighting on the cars with Jake Paul. So she's used to being on that big stage. And she's, you know, um, now that she's grown on that stage with Jake Paul and all the extra attention that she's been getting because of that, you know, she, she's ready. She's ready to make uh, that big splash and really let the world know, you know, how much of a badass she really is. Yeah, and one thing that Katie Hill does have, she has very fast hands, right? So I think she's going to yeah. try to bam, bam, get off, you know, get away. And then Serrano's obviously going to try to be a bulldozer, try to come forward, mix it up to the body and head. So a very interesting matchup. Absolutely. I think that uh, you, you, you assess it right. You know, Katie with the fast hands, Serrano with the pressure. So it's going to be just a matter of, you know, who lands that big shot. And my guess is going to be Kay, uh, Serrano with that big left hand. Yeah, very big fight, historical step towards women's boxing becoming a mainstream sport, right? Similar to what we've seen in, in women's MMA, and especially in the UFC. Yeah, and it's been, you know, one of the things in MMA that helped it grow the sport. You know, the fact that women, you know, they, they, they kind of gave mixed martial arts a facelift you know it was no longer just a sport of just a bunch of brutes you know a bunch of tough guys you know it, it kind of showed that you know it, it was a true sport with with artistry involved and uh, i think it can do the same thing for boxing you know uh boxing ha has you know had some success with the women w women but it hasn't had that consistent success that we see in mma and uh you know you know the names and, and the faces were probably missing during that time, but now we have you know two good challengers, two two good two good people in there that could definitely you know carry the face and be the woman's face of boxing. Shout out to Amanda Serrano. Shout out to Katie Taylor. Going to be a very historic event. I'm Mystic Zach, and I'm Sugar Rashad Evans. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Fight Guys, brought to you by BetOnline.ag.